I'm back from Disney World, and that means I am legally obligated to do a haul video before I post any vlogs, because that is the law here on YouTube. So I just got back from a week-long Disney World trip, and it was a lot of fun. I got to check out Toy Story Land for the first time. Um, I got to hang out with a whole bunch of cool Disney YouTubers, um, some that I've worked with before, and it was a lot of fun. We did Mickey's Not So Scary. We did some really cool stuff like resort hopping, which like, not the actual resort hopping where we stay at multiple resorts, but where we just go visit multiple resorts. Um, and so there were a lot of firsts and it was very memorable. And uh, if you keep an eye out on this channel in the coming weeks, I'll, be, I'll have my vlogs going up. Uh, it'll probably be one part a week. But before I do that, like I said, I'm gonna do a haul video and I'm gonna show off uh, all the stuff that I got and where I got it and why I got it and all that stuff that you would expect from a haul video. I will say it'll probably be pretty short because I don't know if it's an age thing, but as I get older, the amount of stuff I get is smaller and smaller, like both literally in size and also just in quantity. But let's jump right in. So I'm gonna start off with the stuff I didn't buy because it was free, the freebies. And I'm gonna start off with the lamest of the freebies and you're gonna go, Rob, that shouldn't be in a haul video that doesn't really count. But I think it counts because to me, I treasure it. And that is park maps, or I should just say park map, just this one park map, uh, Hollywood Studios. I have gotten really into the habit of collecting the park maps when I go down on trips, specifically when something changes. And like I said, this was the first trip where Toy Story Land was open and it was reflected in the map. So I made sure to save some like nice quality or nice condition versions of the map that are gonna go in my little pile of maps because this is one of those things where it seems silly to like go out of your way to collect these, but having seen older maps that my parents collected, to be able to go back to this in 20 years and go like, whoa, look, it's Hollywood Studios before Galaxy's Edge open. Like, that's really cool. It's like a little slice of history. So I always try to, whenever there's something significantly new, grab a map and save it. So that was the first thing I brought home with me. The other freebie that I picked up is pass holder magnets. I love this trend of Disney giving out free pass holder magnets. Um, we went, while we were there, you know, we did not so scary, but at the same time, we caught the beginning few days of Food and Wine 2018. They were giving out these Mickey uh, pass holder magnets. And so Kat and I each picked up one. That's why I have two. And magnets just, I think, make for great souvenirs when you're at Disney. At least, like again, as I'm getting older, I find my tastes are changing. I don't really pick up t-shirts anymore because I already have enough t-shirts. And like, as far as art on the wall goes, I kind of am running out of wall space. So to find something that is both affordable and also useful and something I can show off, you know, it boils down to magnets. Even my desk is kind of cluttered with little things now. So magnets are really the key. Speaking of magnets, the other thing that I picked up while we were down at Disney was an all-star resort magnet. Uh, this is a mint level magnet. I don't remember off the top of my head how much mint magnets cost. I think it was like 10 or $11. Let me tell you, not worth 10 or $11. These are really low quality magnets. This thing is just a solid shape cut out with a print on it that feels like a sticker. And I went through the whole rack of these and this was the least dirty one I can find. So why did I get it? Well, it's a bit of a tradition. We go to Disney a couple times a year and one of the things we started doing is we started getting magnets for all of the different resorts we stayed at. We thought it was a fun way to remember the resort without doing like mugs or t-shirts, like I said, or art. Um, it's something we could throw on our fridge. It's affordable, it's small and easy to pack away. Um, and it kind of turns it almost into a collectibles game where, you know, maybe that's, you know, it sounds silly, but it kind of helps push me to like try different resorts because that's a new magnet I get to collect. But yeah, really low quality magnet, not to throw too much shade Disney, but like compare this to the uh, art of animation magnet, which uh, I didn't pick up on this trip. This was from a previous trip, but this is like a, you know, the die cut metal. It's got a really cool design. It's got some depth to it because it's layered and some awesome art. It's just, night and day difference in quality when it comes to these two magnets. Uh, this next thing I was about to say was another freebie, but not really because you have to go to Mickey's Not So Scary to get it. And so with that being a charged event, 
uh, it's no longer a freebie. And that is the uh, exclusive, uh, not so scary, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom Orange Bird card. It's the Orange Bird's Juice O Lanterns. We ended up getting two, one for Cat and one for me. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom because before I left on this trip, one of the things I told Christine on an episode of the TTA was my goal was to play through Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom no matter what. Like to set aside time and to play through a game beginning to end, run around the Magic Kingdom, forego rides for it. Um, and I ended up getting the cards to do so. I wasn't going to do it on Not So Scary because it's kind of, you know, there's all this other stuff going on. But on our return trip, we were going to do it. And we got one, one stop in. And as I was watching all of the exposition play out on the screen, I got suddenly so bored with it. And I think the concept's really cool. I love this idea of a card game and you have the different types of cards and they do different things and you have different enemies. Um, but almost immediately into the game, I was thinking, boy, I'd rather be on the Haunted Mansion right now or Space Mountain or literally any ride. And I love video games. And so I really do think that this game at the end of the day, I mean, maybe it's it's catered more towards either younger guests who won't be able to do like their, you know, Space Mountain or Big Thunder or something, um, or more specifically Orlando locals who can afford to go for a day and not do any rides. But as somebody who only visits, you know, once a year or twice a year, I feel like the value of going on rides is just too high to spend the time working on this. So even though I have a deck of cards here, and even though I love the concept, I still have not played through Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. I was thinking on my way back though, like I really wish Disney implemented a way to use these cards in some sort of offline or localized version of the game. Like, wouldn't it be cool if they put out an app that was similar to the game in style, but you know, instead of, you know, standing in front of a storefront, you're standing in front of your iPad or your phone or something, or maybe you scan the card and then you get a digital version and you play at home. I just think it would be really cool to find a way to use these cards at home rather than just using them at the parks. Next up, pins, because I've recently gotten a little bit back into pin trading. I normally only pick up like maybe two, sometimes three pins on a trip. But on this trip, I found myself uh, coming home with five pins. So the five pins that I brought back, uh, starting with the, I guess the Halloween party was the orange bird one. Now this one is a pass holder uh, exclusive. I picked it up because I'm a big fan of the orange bird. I don't know why I'm a big fan of the orange bird. I just think I like the design of the character and I kind of like the history of the character and how it came about. And so I saw this pin and even though I'm not a big fan of like the moving pins, uh, I picked it up anyway. Uh, it retails for $15. Um, it was just a cool, cute pin. The other pin I picked up uh, was the uh, Hocus Pocus Villain Spectacular pin. It's a limited edition, retails for $17. Uh, I picked this one up, even though I'm not a big Hocus Pocus fan, I picked this one up because I really like the design of the characters. Uh, this is a design that showed up multiple times through the event, uh, most notably on the tote bag, which Kat ended up getting one for her and one for her sister. Um, and it caught me off guard because I didn't see this promoted anywhere when they were showing off all of the not so scary merch. So I didn't know it existed until we got there. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, cool. You know, I love this design. This is something I can pick up with the design because I'm not going to walk around with the tote bag. I don't use a tote bag. Um, and like I said, I don't really pick up the t-shirts anymore. So I picked up the pin. The third pin I got was not an event pin. It's a Trader Sam's pin. This pin was essentially me compromising with myself because I went to the store with the express goal of picking up the Trader Sam's shirt, which I think is like 60 or $70. And I was like, no, you know what? I'm gonna pick that up in January when I've got the cruise. And that's when I'm gonna go all in on like the Hawaiian shirts and the, the sandals and everything. In the meantime, I'm just gonna pick up a pin because I love Trader Sam's. And then the other two pins I picked up actually came from a blind box set uh, the set is called Kingdom of Cute. The idea is that they are um, cartoonish representations of ride vehicles and rides and buildings from Disneyland and Disney World with like little cutesy smiley faces on it. And I picked up the blind set for Disneyland 
wanting one specific pin and I like, as I was buying it, I, I regretted it already. I normally wouldn't get this because my luck with blind sets are is just awful. Like, I ended up getting three or four of the, the Epcot ones, and I never got once the pin I was looking for. Um, but I really, really wanted the House of the Future um, pin, and sure enough, that's what one of them was. It was the House of the Future, and then the other one I got was this, uh, this the Steamboat, which I believe is the Frontierland, you know, Rivers of America boat. Uh, this one I don't really care for as much. I'll probably just trade this on my next trip, but the House of the Future I was really happy with. Uh, it's kind of like a lesser known attraction, unless you were there in like the 60s and 70s. Um, so I was really surprised that they even made a pin for it. I basically cashed out at that point, was not going to push my luck any further. I considered then getting the Epcot blind set in hopes of getting that Horizons pin, but I figured, you know what, this is probably the luckiest, luckiest I'm going to get on this trip, so I ended up uh, stopping there. And then last but not least, this one was uh, kind of another compromise, and that was the little Maui ornament that they had at the Polynesian. And look, it lights up. If I can get the switch. Here we go. It lights up. Uh, this retailed for $25. Uh, it was a compromise because they sell a much larger version of this for about $50 uh, that I kept heavily hinting to Cat would make a fantastic Christmas gift because I would love to put it either on the, the shelf back here or on my desk. Um, but seeing this, I was like, oh, this is a way tinier version. This will fit on my desk a lot better. And then what I really love about this, um, it's almost like they were reading my mind, is that it's an ornament but you can actually unclip the ornament bit and remove it so that it just becomes like a little figurine. So you can just put it on your desk and, you know, rather than having an ornament that's only going to be useful that, you know, two weeks to month out of the year that you have a tree up, it becomes something that you use all year round and then convert into an ornament when it comes time to, when it comes Christmas time. So I'm really happy with this. This is going to go on my desk and, you know, I guess when I'm relaxing, I'll, I'll turn on the lights and then it'll be, you know, just the little Maui watching over me. Uh, though Cat, if you're watching, would still love the bigger version for Christmas. Take note. So there you have it. Like I said, short video. I don't bring as much back with me as I used to. It's, I don't know, part of me doesn't want to take up more space and then part of me also wants to save money. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below as to where you can get some of this stuff or whether it's still around. Like I said, if you're looking forward to some of the vlogs from the trip, uh, just keep an eye out on this channel in the next week or so, I'm gonna start posting them. Uh, thank you for watching, whatever you're doing, have a great week, and I'll see you next time.